the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants the things that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Lord, we love you. And we thank you for first loving us. Father, as we dive into the word, we acknowledge the logos, the, uh, Jesus Christ, the living word. We, we glorify your name here in this place. We ask that as you're lifted up, that you would draw all men unto yourself. I ask that you're seen here this morning. I ask that you be worshipped here this morning. And I ask that your sweet spirit would do a deep work in our hearts. I, I bless each and every person in this room. I bless each and every person watching online. I ask, oh God, that your spirit would come and drive back darkness, that you would break every heavy yoke that is not of Jesus, and that we would leave this place transformed by the renewing of our mind. We approach your word with a, with a level of great gravity in, in, in light of the spirit of the fear of the Lord to lead us into wisdom. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right, so we find ourselves in kind of an interesting time in place, okay? Uh, there are wars, rumors of wars, okay? Uh, kings are plotting against each other. Uh, nations, rulers, ideologies, philosophies, princes and powers, and conspiracy theories, okay? And yet, none of those things inspire our study and our approach as we go into the book of Revelation. Why? Because none of these things are new under the sun. That since the fall, that since the first transgression, we see murder, selfishness, pride, ambition, political spirit, and an antichrist spirit. That for us in our generation, okay, um, the book of Revelation is no more relevant today than it was 2,000 years ago. In times of chaos, you say, but Pastor Darren, things are so chaotic this year, and they'll be chaotic next year. And they will be chaotic the year after that. But the prophet said that this year is going to be a year of chaos. As long, okay, until Jesus returns, year after year, we will see this chaos dynamic, and yet we will fear no evil. The chaos won't impact us because God is no stranger to chaos. In fact, okay, um, we did the, how many of you, by the way, were here for our Genesis series? All right, all right. Let's see how hardcore you are. How, how many of you were actually here for the very first week of our Gen Genesis 1? Okay, I told you this day would come. You didn't believe me. I said we were going to study the complete book of Genesis chapter by chapter, verse by verse. We were like six years into it and still in the first chapter, first verse. But here we are. We studied the first book of the Bible. Now we're in the last um, book of the Bible. We learned that in the beginning was the tohu vavohu. In the beginning was the chaos and the void, okay? In the beginning was that nonsensical realm. In the beginning was a racket, man. 
okay? And there, in the middle of the chaos, is Yahweh. God was in the middle of the chaos, and yet he did not make the chaos his friend. Okay, Um, there in the chaos, God spoke. He inserted his leadership and he created cosmos out of chaos. Okay, now God is no stranger of chaos as we will learn in the book of Revelation. Christianity is no stranger to chaos, but chaos should also not be our friend. Okay, blessed are the peacemakers who mend the world's wounds, not blessed are the fear mongers who will deepen them. If we have a fear-based motivation that is driving our Christian theology and efforts, we will impose our fear and our shame on the church, on our own families, and on the culture. And I'm telling you, shame just isn't the best motivator. The book of Revelation, okay, is not an ideology. It is not a philosophy, okay, and it's not a book of conspiracy theories, okay? Um, The book of Revelation does not exist for us to create fear-based content to increase our YouTube reach. The book of Revelation has nothing to do with the 2024 election. It has nothing to do with AI. It has nothing to do with aliens. It has nothing to do with the border crisis. It has nothing to do with the impending economic crash. Man, I'd hate to take that from you. One more year without the massive crash, but maybe this year. Let's put our faith into that. Things got to go. Things got to get worse. Okay? This book has nothing to do with Trump or Biden. This is the timeless, all-time relevant powerful word of God that will be faithful to minister to us, to equip us, to equip a church that loves Jesus, that wants to represent the glory and the authority of Jesus no matter what kind of insanity the culture wants to place on its people or that religious structure wants to place on its adherents. If we understand the book of Revelation, and believe it or not, you can understand this book, okay? If we understand it, we will not be played by the political religious puppet masters, and fear will not control our spirituality. It will not affect our worship of Jesus, the Holy Spirit and anointed one. The book of Revelation does not exist to trigger fear in the hearts of men. It exists to catalyze courage in the heart of a persecuted church. It it exists to inspire joy and worship in the hearts of a crushed people. We are not allowed to impose something on the book of Revelation that the early church did not understand and bear witness with. So we approach this book, okay, with with humility, realizing it's a book of mystery, okay? Um, Just so you know, I will be a self-professing student of this book for the rest of my life. I will never be the the expert, okay? Um, No matter, this will be a lifelong journey into the layers of revelation that, that exist here, okay? But we will approach this as students. We will approach this with humility. We must, because any sort of 
expert in the book of Revelation, any sort of person that says that they got it all figured out, I, I would urge you to unsubscribe to that channel. <laughs> all right. This book was written about 2,000 years ago by the Apostle John. Okay, the apostles were the ones that Jesus uh, personally chose, okay? Handpicked by Jesus, apostles, okay? The word apostle means sent one. They were tasked with the great commission to take the good news of Jesus Christ into all the earth, okay? So here we have the apostles. Here we have the early church, and they are filled with the Holy Spirit, and they have a message, and the Lord is adding to their number, okay? And they preached, and they proclaimed. There was a declaration that came from their lips, and there was also a demonstration, because you cannot have a declaration of the gospel of the kingdom and not have a demonstration of the gospel of the kingdom. I assure you, if you want to see the demonstrations of the kingdom, begin to learn the declaration of the kingdom. The declaration is the kingdom of God is at hand. Heaven is at hand. Now these apostles, these chosen ones, okay, they had a message, just like you and I also have a message. Just to clear me right now, I'm a sent one. Look at the person next to you and say, I got a message. You say, I, I, I don't know if I got a message. Yeah. No, you do. You have a message. You're, you're at Eden, so you have a message. Who knows? Maybe we'll be sending you to start an Eden campus and Eden Zimbabwe and Eden Kent. And Eden, I'm not sure, but I, I, there, there's going to be some things that happen, okay? And it's going to be good, but we're not going to willy-nilly this thing. And we're not going to just come up with our own message. Okay, the apostles had a set message, and it was this. Jesus is the long-awaited Messiah. The wait is over. Messiah has come. The king has come. The second part of their message is, Jesus is the son of God. Okay? He's not just a good man. He's not just a prophet. Okay? He is the way, the truth, the life, the only way to the Father is through the Son. Eden is not a, a universalist church. We don't honor all religions as possible gateways into the realms of heaven. There's one way to the Father, that's to the Son. Any other way into the spirit realm outside of Jesus is an imposter gateway and you cannot trust anything that you are experiencing in these realms if you accessed it outside of Jesus. No other vibration, no other frequency, no other guru, okay? It is all, they are all imposter shepherds, but he's got a good heart, imposter shepherd. Jesus is the way that even Eden cannot be your portal. Only Jesus can save you. Jesus is Messiah. Jesus is the promise, okay, the, the fulfilled promise of the Father. The Father made the promise to the nation of Israel. Jesus is the fulfillment of that promise. Jesus is the Son of God, and Jesus is the Savior of humanity. If Jesus cannot save you, then he is powerless and he is not God. If Jesus cannot save you from methamphetamines, he is not God. If Jesus cannot save you from pornography, he is not God. If Jesus cannot save your marriage, he is not God. If Jesus is incapable of saving you, everything I am saying is a lie. But Jesus is God. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is King. Jesus can save you. This is the message that we preach. This is the message that we believe. He is either who he says he is or he is a liar. And we are a part of the world's greatest farce. But this is not true. Every single week we see demons come out of people. We see uh, uh, cancers healed. We, we, just this, yesterday, just found out doctor verified MS healing, okay? We got the, we got the report of the doctor saying they, this lady had MS and now it's gone. And, and Abigail got, to, got a word of knowledge. And Come on, somebody. <laughs> The mission of the church was and is 
to proclaim salvation by grace through faith alone in Jesus Christ. This is the mission of the early church. This has to be our mission as well. We've got to catalyze good newsers. How do you know you're a Christian? You're a good newser. How do you know you're a Christian? You're filled with the faith of God, the peace of God, the love of God. Man, if, if you look like tweak, hey, freaking out, sharing all your fear-based propaganda, you got to get saved. Jesus is Savior. Jesus is King. Jesus is on the throne. And you are a child of this King. The apostles emphasized aspects of salvation, okay? And these were the aspects, okay? Repentance. They preached the gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom. But you didn't just get to stay the way that you are, okay? The early church, they did not have a message of affirming you in your sin, the early church knew that for you to walk out your relationship with Christ, it demanded a transformation of your character and your whole being. So they, pre they preach repentance, that transformation is possible. Okay? They also preached the doctrine of forgiveness of sin and the authority to, to um, the authority over the power of sin. How many of you know that sin is power? You do not have to be powerless to sin. So we preach the gospel of repentance. Change is possible. We also preach the gospel of forgiveness of sins and power over it. The apostles also preach the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. This is not some sort of new world religion. This is the establishment of the nation of heaven on the earth through the people of God, okay? Um, and for more on that, watch our Christmas series, Kingdom Now. All right. They also taught the hope of eternal life. And because of that, they were not afraid of death. Uh, because they taught the revelation of eternal life, they believed that they would walk in the shadow of death but they would never taste of it. You guys okay? Got real, got real quiet. Got real quiet in here. You guys started making me like a little nervous, actually. I'm just kidding. All right. Declare me right now. Repentance, forgiveness of sins, the kingdom of God, the hope of eternal life. This message was controversial okay um, this message okay uh, was seen as a threat to the Jewish authorities at this time so uh, the dominant religion of Judaism okay th th they they did not like this th th this this preaching they did not like uh, this message okay and so there was this was the early church started to come into a time of radical persecution okay religious persecution the apostles in the early church also started to face imprisonment and even martyr martyrdom um, uh, you could get saved at breakfast and beheaded by dinner okay um, uh, we're going to look at um, the persecuted church and the context of the church that was being crushed during this time because if we don't understand who the church was okay uh, we're going to do some great damage with this book and applying things to us uh, that aren't necessarily uh, uh, supposed to be um, applied to us. So um, this message uh, 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 that of, of the gospel through the apostles was being crushed by religious persecution and political crucifixion. Check this out. Um, during this time, uh, during the first century, okay, in Rome, they would declare Caesar is Lord. So imagine being in the church and declaring Jesus is Lord. Do you see how subversive the Christian faith was to the entire establishment? The entire cultural establishment saw this new movement as a threat. Not only that, but people wrestled with the radical nature of Christianity. 
people wrestled with the fact that you could simply be saved by grace? Imagine this. Your entire concept for religion is all based off of what you do. Imagine having all these laws and all these records and all these feasts. Imagine having all of these handbook after handbook after handbook after handbook. This is what your worship looks like. This is what your giving looks like. This is, this is what everything looks like, okay? And then all of a sudden you hear, wait a second. My salvation is not contingent on what I do, but my salvation has been made possible because of what Jesus has done? That's, that, that's radically scandalous. That's actually r radically triggering, especially if you're doing a good job following the handbook. Okay. And so um, uh, people struggled with this. People also struggled with the idea that if I say yes to Jesus, most likely cost me my job. Because you, you, you could not belong to your, to your guilds, to the unions of this time, and be a Christian. Um, it, could it could cost you your family. It would cost you your standing in the community. Most likely you'd have to move out of the neighborhood. Like, to become a Christian costs you everything. And so um, these are the dynamics by which God is about to reveal this letter to the church. Radically dif difficult time. And to a great degree, um, the church that this was being addressed to really looks, if we're being honest, nothing like the Church of America. I'm sorry. Okay, you know, in the Church of America, you know, we're being persecuted because we lost our Twitter account. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, and I hope you got it back. We, we do not know persecution in America. Okay? We, we, we just don't. So get over yourself and let's see um, that there are other cultures that are in a very similar spot in place to the early church, okay? And, and yet we have to prepare. This, this is a prophetic book and we must, we must study it. Why? Because this prophetic book, it will prepare us because there are patterns in history. History repeats itself. There is an antichrist spirit and whether it's in our generation or the next, I am telling you there is a time coming where the book of Revelation is not a luxury. It is a necessity for us to navigate the trickiness of the times. Let's begin with the beginning of Revelation. It begins by saying, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants. This is not the book of Revelations. It is the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ. The purpose of this book is, it's, it's the revelation, the, the the apocalypse. This is the unveiling. This is the disclosure of Jesus. Okay. The purpose of this book. Okay. The core objective is to make Jesus known to us. To unveil a deeper understanding and appreciation for who he is, okay, his character, his role in the world, his role in the church, and his ultimate victory. Okay, um, when we read the book of Revelation, we are going to discover afresh who God is, the image of God in us and this great partnership with this amazing work that has begun and that he will finish it it will be complete it will be beautiful it will be glorious this is a great unveiling made possible by God it says God gave this revelation God gave this revelation to Jesus Christ, who then conveyed it to the angel, right? And then to the apostle John from God, okay? Um, uh, 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 from, uh, uh, to reveal Jesus 
from God himself to the Apostle John, the letter given to the church. And we see that this book ultimately is a worship book. It's a disclosure book, okay? And we will see that there will be <laughs> plenty of wonderful, okay, opportunities to get distracted. Okay? <laughs> and I am going to have to be accountable to you. You're going to have to be able to say, and the elders here are going to have to be able to say, whoa, Darren, 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 Darren. Let's bring it back to Jesus. There's going to be some wonderful opportunities for you to get distracted. We're going to be in this for the entire 2024, in this election year. Okay? Um, uh, 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 things are going to be happening. Things are already happening. Okay? And um, I, I'm going to need, I'm going to need you to keep your focus. I'm going to need you to keep your focus on Jesus. That, that you're able to turn off the TV and say, yeah, but where is Jesus at? That you're able to get to Revelation and say, yeah, but where is Jesus at? That, that together as a community, we will say we will behold him. Because then we will respond like him in the midst of of this crisis. This crisis is just an opportunity for us to represent his glory, righteousness, the authority of his kingdom on the earth. And it says here that he made known, okay, by sending his angel to his servant John. This word sent here, okay, speaks of sent and signified, okay? In the Greek, it means to give a sign, so, um, gift from God to glorify the Son, given to the, 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 the agent of transmission, Apostle John, a gift to the body of Christ. See it? And it says here, okay, how did he do it? He did it through a sign. Okay? Um, uh, this signet sign, this letter is a sign. It is a token. It is filled with symbols, okay? Um, and as we are diving into this, we're going to unpack this even more um, next week. We will say that God has a lot to say, but what he has to say, it is so um, subversive and such a threat to every dynamic of that day. It literally has to be encoded through imagery. It literally has to be encoded through symbols. Now, if you were a pagan in this time and you got a hold of this letter, it would make no sense to you because you would have no understanding of the Jewish writings. Okay? Um, in the same way, for many in the church, the book of Revelation makes no sense to them because we lack understanding of the Old Testament. So in order to understand the book of Revelation, we have to see that Jesus is the key. Jesus is the key who unlocks the entire Old Testament. And as we dive into this book, we'll approach it through Christ, the key, unlocking the entire Old Testament because the Jewish people would understand what the lamb means. The pagans would read this and say, lamb, that makes no sense. Okay? Uh, the pagans would read this and say, you mean Literal whores and dragons are going to come out of the ocean? Okay? If you don't understand the Old Testament, you would say, the locusts aren't really locusts, Pastor Darren. Now, beloved, don't you understand that those locusts were um, black Apache, Apache helicopters, okay? Now, those locusts in Revelation are actually um, governmental. Um, the World Health Organization has these helicopters, okay, that look like locusts. And what John was seeing was the world health. I got to be careful because we're streaming on Facebook and YouTube. I was briefed recently about things I can say and can't say. Um, I, even had to, I even had to take a course um, as far as things I'm allowed to say and not, and not say. Um, th this might be the year that uh, we leave YouTube forever and do something, do something different. But, um, but we are still, uh, we can't, we can't pick on the World Health, but we can pick on the Catholic Church. <laughs> they don't care about that. You know? Darren, Darren, don't, don't you know? Um, 
This book is going to look like a total mystery. Uh, it's going to look like it's not even possible to understand. But as we dive into this with Christ the key, unlocking the Old Testament, we will see that it gives to us a multi-layered, beautiful approach to the chronos timeline of God's word. And the way that it, that the way that it jumps around in the scriptures is absolutely radically extraordinary and doesn't follow our Greek way of understanding a story. So with all that being said, we are in for the time of our lives. We are going to dive into the revelation of Jesus the Christ, the holy and anointed one, the ancient of days, a literal letter written to a literal people with massive prophetic implications for the earth and the nations today. It's going to awaken us. It's going to mobilize us. It's going to humble us us and I am so stinking excited to be in this journey with you let's stand up together before we even move forward I need to invite you to surrender any sort of self-lordship or any sort of attempt to save yourself. If you are up against something that's bigger than you, if you're up against a doctor's report, if you're up against a bill that is impossible, if you're up against a secret sin that is building and compounding, I have such good news. You do not have to save yourself. In fact, in fact, please don't. Please don't. Um, this morning, I invite you to surrender. I invite you to, 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 to wave your white flag and to come out of the house with your hands up. I invite you to make this day the greatest day in your life, not the day when all your problems were immediately solved, but the day you met a sufficient, trustworthy Savior, one who will come alongside of you from this day forward, whose guarantee of union will be sufficient because of his covenant and his sacrifice, not your sacrifice. And if you would say to me today, Pastor Darren, I need this. I need this kind of saving. I need this kind of savior. I don't want to do this on my own. I don't want to do the religious thing. I don't want to have to just, just fake holiness or pretend to be Christian. I want the real deal. I want Jesus, this king of glory, his glorious spirit inside of me and transforming me. Pastor Darren, I want to go on this journey into the word, but I don't want to do it without the living word. Can we all just lift up our hands together? Would you just say this with me? Just say, Jesus, Jesus I, surrender. I surrender. I give up. I, give up. I can't make myself holy. But by faith, I receive the gift of your holiness. I receive the gift of your righteousness. I receive the gift of your faith inside of me. I surrender. I give up. I ain't going to fake it till I make it. I want the real God. I want the real spirit of Christ Jesus. I want to see the real power of God. I ain't going to fake it. I know you aren't going to fake it. Jesus, I need you. I declare. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth. That Jesus is Messiah. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is my solution and the solution for nations. And by faith, I grab a hold of the hand of Jesus right now. And by faith, Jesus, you grab a hold of my heart right now. Holy Spirit, I receive you to come inside of me, not to visit with me, but to occupy me. Holy Spirit, come. 
Holy Spirit, come. Fill me now with your spirit. Fill me now with your grace. Fill me now with empowerment to overcome sin. Hallelujah. 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 If you have believed this, if you have spoken these things, listen to me. Your sins, all of them, have been forgiven. It's final. It's done. There is now no more condemnation in his heart towards you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you so much. He wants to take that fear. He wants to take that abandonment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He loves you so much. Can our ministry team come? If you're here today and you've been tormented, oppressed underneath the heavy yoke of demonic harassment. Even in the, even in the first service, I don't know if, if he's here in this service, but even in the first service, a young man came up to me. In a battle, man, you could, you could feel the battle. He said, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a slave to methamphetamines. Will you pray? And I told him, I told you, if Jesus is incapable of setting you free from that crack pipe, then he is powerless. The power of God came, you know. There, there was stuff there. I felt it in the first service. I feel it in this service. You do not have to be subject to the yoke of slavery. You do not have to be subject to condemnation, to demonic harassment. If you're here today and you've attached yourself to something that's not clean, something that is not right, you're here today and you feel that battle inside of you. You're hearing the Word of God say, this thing requires your complete surrender, and yet there's something inside of you saying, I can't give it up. I won't give it up. Today, today, my friend, this is your day. And if you're willing, like if you're not willing to surrender your life, then Christianity is just not going to be your thing, man. Like the only way into the kingdom is all in. It just requires all your chips. And if you're willing, listen, if you're willing to go all in today, I am telling you, God already went all in 2,000 years ago when he gave his only begotten son for you because of his love for you. He's already gone all in. And if you're willing to surrender, God will show up. He will show off. He will do something, not next year, not in five years from now. He will do something today. He will break the heavy yoke. He will drive out those demons. He will radically set you free. He will set you on a new trajectory. And if that's you, man, I want to call you into the kingdom today. I want to call you into the nation of heaven on the earth, into the family of God. So if that's you, man, promise me you won't leave. Don't, don't just go. Don't just, don't just go on with your life. Come up. Just, I want you to see one of, one of these amazing men. Look at, we've got like 80, 100 people here this morning. You won't even have to wait in line. You just come. It won't be like the DMV. You just come right up to the front. We're going to pray for you. We're going to stand with you. And God is going to show up. And he's going to show off in your life. Is that good? And then if you're new here or new-ish, I want you to see me out there in the hallway. I've got a book for you. You can read it in like four bathroom readings. It's really, real thin, <laughs> real thin book. Otherwise, you are absolutely loved. God bless you.